So firstly, I want to provide you with a short presentation on the Town Centre First Heritage Revival Scheme, or as we fondly know it as Thrive. Uh, this scheme is co-funded by the Government of Ireland and the European Union under the Southern, Eastern and Midland Regional Programme 2021 to 2027 and the Northern and Western Regional Programme 2021 to 2027. As you may be aware, there's three, not two regions in Ireland. There's the Southern region, the Eastern and Midland region and the Northern and Western region. However, there's only two ERDF regional programmes in Ireland, um, and one of those is covering two of those regions. So the Southern, Eastern and Midland regional programme covers the Southern region and the Eastern and Midland, Midland region, and they have funding of 663 million under that programme, which is managed by the Southern Regional Assembly. And the Northern and Western regional programme uh, for the Northern and Western region with funding of 217 million, which is managed by the Northern and Western Regional Assembly. So while TRI funding is available to all local authorities in the Republic of Ireland, applications must be submitted to your managing authority responsible for your region, as these will be separate competitions for funding. So for example, if you're a Leash County Council, then your application should go to the Southern Regional Assembly. But if you're a Mayor County Council, your application will go to the Northern and Western Regional Assembly. So, so just to talk a little bit about Thrive, the objective of Thrive is for local authorities to develop an integrated urban strategy or enhance an existing integrated urban strategy and to also fund capital investment projects within our designated settlements. The designated settlements are outlined in the call documents that we would have sent to all of you in relation to the Thrive Scheme, and they're defined as key towns, regional growth centres and cities and suburbs. The funding under Thrive will be awarded directly by the Regional Assembly to successful beneficiaries, and all our local authorities are eligible for funding under the scheme. The purpose of the scheme is to reduce vacancy and dereliction by creating a sustainable and viable reuse for heritage building. And all funding under the scheme must take a town centre first approach and ensure citizen, community and stakeholder engagement. And they must also respect the new European Bauhaus principles by being sustainable, beautiful, inclusive and accessible. The deadline for Strand 1 applications is the 5th of April and for Strand 2 applications is the 3rd of May. And this Thrive scheme is funded under Priority 3, which is Integrated Sustainable Herbal Development. And following negotiations with the European Commission, we managed to increase the funding under this scheme from 8% of the total ERDF funding for Ireland to 15%. And what that basically means for our local authorities is that the original budget for the scheme of 64 million has now been increased to 120 million, which is obviously a big plus for our, our local authorities and the funds we have available. So there's two strands under the scheme. Strand one will fund between 40,000 and 200,000 to develop an integrated urban strategy or enhance an existing integrated urban strategy, or it can be used if those strategies are, are in place to prioritize, develop, or undertake pre-work site investigations, preliminary specification and design or planning for a heritage building that has already been identified in an integrated urban strategy. Strand two then will fund capital works with funding of between two and seven million. And it will require that the preliminary design, consents and planning are in place and that these projects are basically ready to commence um, straight, more or less straight away. So a little bit more detail on strand one. As mentioned, the strand is for the development and enhancement of integrated urban strategies using a town centre first approach, and therefore it will require the involvement of your citizens and stakeholders. Um, the integrated strategy should identify projects that promote the conservation and re reuse of heritage buildings that are currently vacant 
derelict or underutilized. Um, if, an or, if an integrated urban strategy is already in place and fully completed, and a specific heritage project has been identified, then the Strand One funding can be used to get that project investment ready. And you can undertake a number of works which are all laid out within the application guidelines for Thrive and everything from design, stabilization works, preliminary specifications, planning can be used, uh, this fund can be used to assist with. So every local authority within a designated settlement can submit one application for funding under strand one for each of the designated settlements. OK, so if you are a local authority and you have two designated settlements, as would be laid out in Appendix 1 of the application guidelines, then you can put submit two applications or multiple applications for each designated settlement. OK, this will be a competitive funding call, but it is also 100 percent grant funded. So I'm sure there will be a huge interest in applying for these funds to either complete your strategies or to get your projects investment ready. Um, I won't go into the full uh, eligibility costs in relation to the expenditure, except to just highlight for you that there's a simplified cost option under strand one, whereby any of your direct um, costs that you submit as part of your application, then you will also, in addition to that, get 7% indirect costs or overheads um, as part of a simplified cost option to cover, um, obviously, all other costs. So in order to qualify for funding under the Strand 1, we keep talking about this integrated urban strategy, um, and, and this must comply with ERDF funding regulations. So in order to assess whether you currently have an integrated urban strategy or whether it meets those requirements, you need to ensure that firstly, that your integrated urban strategy outlines the geographical area that it covers. It must um, outline the development needs and potential of the designated settlement. It must uh, describe the integrated approach that has been taken in order to, to develop that strategy. So what citizen community stakeholder engagement was undertaken at the design and implementation stages. Uh, of the strategy, and it must describe the multi-level governance and bottom-up approach that was taken. And finally, what it should do then is include a list of potential projects for redevelopment. And it is from that list of projects that your strand two funding projects should be chosen. OK, so I'm hoping that gives you a better understanding. We keep banding around this integrated urban strategy, but this hopefully will give you an idea of, well, if you're looking at existing strategy and there can be any number of strategies that a local authority has, if your strategy addresses all these areas, then you can potentially use the funding under Strand 1 for um, getting your investment, uh, your, your project investment ready. So then strand two, strand two will cover the capital works that have a positive and transformative impact on your town centres and that reduce vacancy and dereliction. The project must be citizen and community led and use first uh, town centre first approach. It must also embrace the principles and values of the new European Bauhaus. Local authorities are the beneficiaries of the tribe scheme and therefore they must already own the heritage building to be regenerated or they must have a property transfer or sharing agreement in place with another public body at the time of applying for strand two funding under Trite. OK, we have to be able to contract with yourselves. So therefore, there must be some sort of a legal bind to the actual property that we're going to be providing the funding for. So every local authority with a designated settlement can submit one application only for funding under strand two. So if you have multiple designated settlements as laid out in the guidelines under, under appendix one, then it's up to the local authority to decide which of their designated settlements and which project they will put forward. But only one application will be accepted from each local authority. As this will be a, a competitive funding call and is 100% grant funding, local authorities 
you need to be looking at the assessment criteria that's in the tribe guidelines and choosing the project that best meets those guidelines and will score highest. So if you have two or three potential projects, please go to the guidelines, look at what we're going to be scoring you on. We'll be very open and transparent with how we're going to score it and what we're going to score and choose the project that best meets our criteria because that's likely to have the best success um, and score the highest when we come to assess these applications. Um, I'm not, again, I won't go through the eligible costs, but it's mainly your capital costs for your project. It doesn't include the purchase of land and buildings. Um, and as I said, it is 100% grant funded. However, it is expected that local authorities commitment will come from the staff and resources and senior management time spent on the project and also potentially the use of local authority office beds, office space and overheads to undertake the projects. So that's the commitment that you're bringing to it. We're not asking you to co-fund it, but we're asking you to provide your team of people and your senior management commitment to the project. And that's obviously your contribution towards the, pro the Strand 2 project. So again, we talk about heritage building and the whole of Thrive is based on this. What we've tried to do is we've tried to keep as wide as possible a definition of what a heritage build, building may be, therefore to allow as many properties as possible to be considered for funding. So you'll see here, um, and this comes from the guidelines, just a breakdown of the type of prop, uh, properties. It could be, these can range from institutional, industrial buildings, historic landmark buildings. Um, however, they must be vacant, derelict or underutilized and their reuse must be sustainable, it must be a viable end use, and we must have the ability to potentially drive significant further town centre regeneration. So you're trying to pick a building, a heritage building, that first of all can give an uplift to the area in its own regeneration, but hopefully then stimulate further regeneration in that town centre. All of the applications uh, under the Thrive scheme must demonstrate and promote the values of the new European Bauhaus. Now, in line with the first a town centre first approach, the new European Bauhaus requires citizens and communities to be at the centre of the development of your integrated urban strategies. Um, it's basically providing, hopefully, an opportunity for you to undertake further engagement for the people who are going to most benefit from this type of regeneration. Um, you must ensure that you demonstrate co-design and co-creation and implementation of your strategies and projects and outline the collaboration and engagement that you had with your citizens, your stakeholders and your communities. In addition, each application should ensure that they demonstrate the sustainable nature of the strategy uh, or the project, and that they have ensured the creation of hopefully a beautiful, inclusive and accessible strategy and project that has taken on board the needs of all of your citizens, citizens and all of their requirements. And that can be from disadvantaged groups, it can be from people with disabilities, but it's taken on board all of the requirements of your citizens and ensuring that you're working as best as possible to meet their requirements. So I've just put up a slide here. This is the Southern, Eastern and Midland designated settlements. And this is just an extract from the, um, the guidelines. And you'll see each of our local authorities are there and some have one, some have multiple um, designated settlements. Um, under the Southern, Eastern and Midland settlement, all of these local authorities will be competing for the total allocation we have under Thrive, which is for it, roughly around 90 million. OK, so obviously, from our perspective, it's a it, it's a it, it's a, a big fund of uh, available with 100 percent funding. It will be highly competitive. And at the outset, we would say for strand two applications, not every application will be successful because there won't be sufficient funding to actually meet that. So please be mindful 
of attending the information sessions because all of this will help in making your application as strong as possible um, before you submit. And this is an extract then in relation to the northern and western designated settlements. Um, there's a fund here of 30 million and each of those local authorities will be competing again, particularly under strand two, competing for a limited pot of funding. So it's a matter of everybody putting their best foot forward um, and putting the best project forward for, for, for funding that meets the criteria that we've already set out in our uh, in our guidelines. <laughs> 